Hello, it has been a few weeks. I am so sorry. I will be announcing the reason my upload schedule is so suckish soon. But in the meantime, thank you so much for your patience. Anyways, I do not want to waste your time. You are here for how to begin your individual femininity journey. I am making this video because when I first wanted to embrace femininity, I had no idea where to begin. I swear I had not even heard of the concept of femininity until just a couple of years ago. And prior to that, I hardly thought about it. It really didn't cross my mind until a few years ago. But when I did finally look into it, I was so eager to begin embracing it, but also so confused as to how. I did not grow up with an emphasis on femininity at all, although my parents did not push masculinity on me either. The specific concepts of femininity and masculinity were just not a part of my upbringing, so it was essentially a foreign concept to me, even though I had this inexplicably strong pull and interest towards it when I was suddenly introduced to femininity online. But because it was such a foreign concept, I got confused so easily. I was confused as to whether or not to really embrace it because traditional femininity is so demonized. I was confused because I didn't want to lose my sense of self, my individuality while on this new journey, I was completely overthinking it. And because of that, I did not make nearly as much headway early on than I could have. And I want to help make sure other women do not have as many pitfalls on their femininity journey. So I really hope this video helps you get on the right path. You may want to pull out a notebook to take notes or something if that's helpful. Oh, and please uh, subscribe and like for more content like this. Let's begin. Number one, have a good why. When embarking on any endeavor, when making any choice, having a good why is just as important as the what and the how. Why do you want to do this? Why do you want to embrace femininity? What is your reason for wanting to embrace it? Having a strong why is important because it is the driving force behind your endeavor. If your why is shallow, like it seems like fun or I want to try something different, then it'll be an ineffective driving force. You will then most likely abandon the endeavor sooner than later. Personally, my driving force behind embracing femininity was coming to know God's intentions for how women are to be, who God intended for us to be. The reason why it is fundamental for us to have God's word as the foundation for femininity and masculinity is because then we know there is intention behind femininity and masculinity. That women are meant to be feminine through intent. It's not just an arbitrary side effect of evolution, which is what femininity would be if there was no God. We would then be feminine for no good reason whatsoever. In that case, why embrace femininity? Because women evolve to be that way through blind repetitive forces, not a very good reason to embrace it. And that is why basing femininity on God's word is so crucial. This also helps you to feel safe in femininity. Some women say they do not feel safe while operating in the feminine, but God's glorious design did not leave you vulnerable. It leaves you safe. Number two, understand what femininity truly is and what it's not, and that our strength is in our feminine. Many people these days, unfortunately, don't like strict definitions very much because they're limiting and confining, and many people want to be liberated from all constraints and boundaries, which may be why people these days are so complacent. A woman is not anything in particular. There is not one particular thing. It could be many things to many people. Some women have penises, right? Some men have vaginas. But limits are very, very good and necessary things. True freedom lies in the opportunity to pursue excellence, and boundaries of gender are what create the possibility of excelling as a man or as a woman. Ironically, 
ironically, boundaries are essential for freedom. If you, for instance, want to be free to draw a giraffe, you have to draw him on something and with the traits that make him a giraffe. Otherwise, you'll have nowhere to draw and you won't actually be drawing a giraffe. I hope that metaphor makes sense. <laughs> Femininity is the celebration of the image and likeness of God alive in each woman ever created by his glorious and diligent hands. Femininity is the natural, virtuous, and effective expression of womanhood. To truly understand what femininity is, we have to also identify the fundamental differences between men and women. The notion of male and female heterogeneity is fundamental to the God view of mankind. In the very first chapter of Genesis, we're told that God created us male and female in his image. The distinction between the sexes is not only basic to human nature, it's also uniquely reflective of the divine. A simple way to understand the fundamental differences between men and women is to remember that men focus more on doing and women focus more on being. And thus, a man's orientation towards life tends to be more outward and a woman's orientation towards life tends to be more inward. And this is also the nature of our reproductive parts. The male sexual organ is outward and the female sexual organ is inward. What a coincidence. <laughs> Not. So a man's outward orientation towards life tends to be more explorative. He is more opportunistic. He takes more risks. He's an initiator. He's more competitive, dominant, and active. While a woman's inward orientation towards life tends to value intimacy over action because she cares more about being than doing. She is more receptive, more accommodating. She's more cautious and seeks safety and security. She's humble and is more connective to people and wields a soft kind of strength and influence while a man wields a more hard kind of strength and influence. So please recognize that our strength is in our femininity. A woman will never be masculine like a man can be, just like a man can never be feminine like a woman can be. And therefore, we will never be able to fully optimize our strength, our influence, our competence while operating in a masculine manner. It is notable that the first time in scripture that the woman is referred to, it is as a helper. I know that the term helper or helpmeet can be difficult to reconcile with. It seems so offensively oblivious to the fact that we are capable individuals with gifts and talents and abilities that are in no way inferior to men's gifts, talents, and abilities. But to see helpmeet as a demeaning or inferior role is not biblical. Women are essential. Adam needed a helper. He was incapable of doing his job by himself, incapable of either filling the world or subduing it. So God created a helper for the job. Woman was not an arbitrary afterthought. She was hopefully essential. When God gave Eve to Adam, he was giving Adam an amplifier. Adam alone is just Adam. Adam with Eve is the entire human race. Eve is fruitfulness. Women are an integral part of God's glorious design, no less integral than men, and embracing femininity, embracing God's design for us, is how we hopefully fulfill our role. Number I think this is number three. <laughs> Identify your natural feminine traits and be true to your own femininity. Please do not try to emulate how another woman expresses her femininity. I know there are a lot of feminine icons like Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn, Grace Kelly, and Princess Diana, and they can certainly give you inspiration to draw from, but trying to emulate how they express femininity will not be fruitful to you, especially in the long run. You have to remind yourself that you cannot be someone else. You would just be a poor copy of them and a disingenuous version of yourself. Embracing femininity does not take away from your individuality. I talk more about why femininity does not erase individuality and my femininity is not a social construct video. In fact, it is amazing how many women who have watched my content comment that they began to feel more like themselves after they began to embrace femininity because this is who we're meant to be. 
If you are walking in accordance with God's word, you'll be your own kind of feminine and eventually grow into it. Your femininity is not measured by what you wear, your makeup or your lack of makeup, your hobbies, whether you're single or not, whether you have many children. These can be expressions of femininity, but never ways to calculate it. Femininity is not something to be compared or meticulously measured. It is something to be lovingly, wholeheartedly, and selflessly lived. A woman's femininity flows from her heart, her character, her soul, her mind, the unique love and feminine genius she brings to the world around her. That's why if you want to genuinely embrace femininity, you cannot just emulate how another woman expresses her femininity because it'll be nothing but a shallow facade. It'll be disingenuous and you'll be a poor version of the feminine woman you actually are. Number four, identify the areas of your behavior you want to tackle first. If you are a woman, then you definitely have feminine virtues naturally. However, we are all fallen and therefore we all have certain aspects of femininity that we especially want to or need to improve. Perhaps you're too prideful and need to work on humbling yourself. Perhaps you're too stringent and want to work on being more flexible and accommodating. Perhaps you're really blunt and want to work on being more tactful. It may be helpful to ask those around you for constructive criticism. It's seldom easy to hear, but can be so edifying. And finally, try to establish connections with other women. I know it's a funny yet very real joke that none of us have friends, but being around other feminine beings can really charge your feminine batteries, so to speak. Although being with a masculine man gives you the space to be in your feminine because of polarity, having female connections is beneficial as well since women have a very special ability to hold space for each other's emotions and understand each other on a very deep personal level. We're able to empathize with each other so effortlessly and we're able to indulge in feminine pastimes together. So I highly encourage you to feed the positive female friendships that you have or to make new ones. I know it's difficult, but it'll be so fruitful in the long run for you. Well, that is it for today's video. Again, I am so sorry it took me so long to upload. I will be announcing why soon again, but in the meantime, I thank you all so much for your patience and thank you for watching my videos. It is so special that 30,000 people have said that to themselves, I want to see more of this girl. And I do not want to disappoint you guys. I'm going to try my best to upload more consistently and to fulfill the requests you have been giving me. I am so excited for what's to come on this channel. Well, thank you again so much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. I am Jasmine Theodora and hopefully I'll see you next time. God bless you.